summer 2021. My name's Dan Jones, this is Dan's Boat Life, and uh, yeah, if you're watching from outside of the Pacific region, uh, La Nina is here to stay. It's official, La Nina. It's uh, Spanish for uh, bloody, wet, uh, and cold. Uh, leave your bikinis and your budgie smugglers at home. Um, at least I think, I think that's the meaning, um, or the translation. Uh, anyway, you just have to roll with me on that. So, I'm here, I'm hanging with Rick. The Rick 280. Rick, it's not a bloke, it's a brand from Germany. And these guys, it's a completely new brand with a, a very interesting history and, and pedigree behind them. So if you've heard of the Fjord motorboats, um, these guys, they brought luxury, big, expensive day boats to the world. And they've done it very successfully for a long time. It's the same mob. They've also behind the Hansi brand of yachts and a whole bunch of other sailing boats. And they're quite well known. So you got the backing of this huge global company based in Germany, Ooh, falling out, falling through the sand here, based in Germany. And they've seen the success of the adventure boats. And they thought, you know what? We can do a pretty good job at that. So we're going to. And those long winters they have up there, I reckon they've got a lot of time to design, think, produce, which is exactly what they've been doing. And we're gonna take advantage of that. So come on in close and I'll, um, I'll just show you what I'm experiencing and what I'm learning. And let's have a bit of a walkthrough on this beauty. It's not that cold. I don't have to be wearing this beanie. I'm just doing it for, for effect. It's probably about 20 degrees. So that's cold for an Australian summer, but I'll take the beanie off in a second. Um, the hull shape's quite interesting. So I wanna make sure you guys can see all this. Can you see down here? Um, I'm here with Tom from Windcraft, the dealers for the Rick 280, and they got a few of these boats on the way. This is the first one in the country. Um, so like all first boats, I'm sure there's a few little niggly things that need sorting out, but um, we're here to show you what we learn and, and look at it in a big picture kind of way. Um, it's got the air steps. So I don't know if you can see that. But essentially, if you haven't seen any of my videos before on air steps, they are designed just down there and there to suck air in at speed, break the surface tension with the water using bubbles, and then it reduces drag. So it's a really efficient way to get the boat moving using less horsepower and burning less fuel. And if you incorporate that with a nice cutting bow, and look at this reverse bow we've got here. This this is gorgeous. This is really, really gorgeous, but this has a functional aspect as well. So what's going on, it's parting the waves nice and early, allowing the boat to drive hard, fast, and flat through the water. So a couple of other sort of changes, or not changes, because it's a new brand, but I'm comparing this to other brands and, and other boats in this category. I can see it's quite full in the bow. Oh no! got water down my gum boot. That'll come off in a second. Um, but it, it's quite full in the bow. So essentially that's allowing for the accommodation downstairs. So this, this particular boat is going for accommodation forward and they've achieved that by keeping that fullness up the front here. But interestingly, it still gives you that full on adventure boat feeling when you're out on the water like it is blowing today we went through some chop we went through some offshore waves as well um, the boat's smooth it's smooth it's fast and it's fun i i, I like seeing uh, a permanent anchor incorporated in the bow here we haven't tried that out just yet but it looks like it's got a clear drop do you see you always want to be careful with these vertical bows how that's going to operate and a lot of them uh, you know, in the inception of this sort of category of boat, they, they didn't have long enough bow rollers, so you were forever clipping your bow, but this looks like it's nice and clear, and we've got a straight drop there, so as long as you watch for the swing of the anchor itself, it's going to be okay. They're going with the practical nature, with the rub rail all the way around the side of the boat. Now this is a wrapped hull, so you can have all sorts of different wraps, you can have different colours, um, but this one has been wrapped in, look at me, fancy green, I guess you want to call that. Um, and as you would when you're a new brand in the country. We've got aluminium powder coated black railings and they look super cool. 
right the way around the boat. And we're gonna see lots more of that, but I think it's time to jump on board. I'll see if I can get my little legs up on this slightly bigger bow compared to some of the other boats on the market. But I think having this in this gives you a bit of a point of leverage. Okay, that wasn't the smoothest, but it's still doable. And you could do something like, if you were nosing into the beach, you could do something like mounting a fold down swim ladder here, I think. Um, but it's quite possible with a boat like this to come in stern to. We didn't today because we don't actually know this beach and uh, we weren't sure what the depth was like. So we thought we'd better come in, bow in and see if it's possible. So pass me that camera, you jump on as well. And then let's check out this beauty of a boat. All right, so I'm gonna pass that back to you, Tom, and I'm gonna get the branding going and we'll leave that there for now. So, I wanna make sure you guys can see all of this. Can you, can you see that? Okay. First things first, the bow is a social bow. There are removable sunshades with two poles and a mesh sunshade like you'd see on many boats these days. But this area here, the foam is super thick and comfortable. We've got a couple of drink holders here. And what I noted during the drive, we hit 42 knots top speed, they didn't move. So that they're, they're secured in some sail tracks or some zippers uh, underneath and the foam is locked into position. So that's, that's good to see because that is a bit of an annoyance personally when I've drive some of these go fast boats and they're just held on with press studs up the front and you get up to 40 knots, the next thing the thing takes off because you gotta remember if, if your top speed is 40 knots, if you're driving into 20 knot debris, your wind over the deck, it's 60 knots. You, you, you're approaching a cyclone. So um, you just wanna make sure those cushions are secured prof properly. This one is, and it's good to see. The foam's really thick and comfortable. We've got flexi teak all the way around the decks just here. And the gunnels, like, they're reasonably high. You know, I'm, I'm short man, as you'd know if you've seen some of my other videos, but this is almost up to my waist. So this has been raised as it comes to the bow. And then you step down when you get into the main cockpit area just there. I'm just gonna talk to you about a couple other things that I see. A nice design element with a bit of a practical function as well. This is the stainless, not stainless, that's gonna be powder coated aluminum, sorry, support for the solid bimini. Now this is not a material or a composite bimini. This is bimini, this is a solid GRP. This one has been wrapped, but I'm just gonna jump over this side so you can get a clearer shot at me there, Tom. Um, but this is great. So this is gonna last a long time and it's also gonna be perfect for mounting roof racks, putting surfboards, stand-up paddle boards, all that sort of stuff. It becomes your you ute basically, it's, you can treat it like a ute because you can be super practical with that area. Um, now, I just wanna to go to the bow, so you go and then point back at me, guys, so you can see, and I want you just to be able to see. In here is the anchor locker. We'll cut to a shot of this, but it's huge. It's very, very deep, and all the boat's quite large fenders store happily in there, and they don't interfere with the anchor setup, so that's, that's really clever. And the anchor mount itself is quite cleverly mounted. Um, you'll have to just uh, see that on the footage that we cut to, but it's quite a cleverly mounted way that they've done that. So I, I like to see that. So coming back, if you guys uh, kind of follow me, you stay on that side, Tom, and I'll walk down the port side. We'll go to the back of the boat, which is gonna be your hangout zone, I think, because Check this out. This is cool. Like deep, comfortable, thick foam. I love these corner seats when you're riding along at speed. But you know, in terms of how many people you can get here. Now I've actually been told, uh, thank you. I love all the feedback that you guys have been giving me. Apparently I've been a little bit uh, too generous with my numbers uh, in terms of how many people you can get on the seats. Cause I realized there's Ruby size and then there is uh, yeah, Malungi, your, your Tongan mate from the rugby club. So uh, I'll try and do this somewhere in between. <laughs> I think that's one. We'll call that two, 
three, four, let's call it five. Five average size people, maybe up to seven, maybe four if it's, if it's the rugby boys. But around this beautiful fixed, I know this has been highly polished in Australia, um, teak table just here, which can also drop down to convert this area into a sun lounge. But there's more. If you just come back here and operate this, how good's that? So all of this can be one massive sun pad. So for a boat of 28 feet in length, to have that, I really, really like it. You know, it's, it's giving you big boat features on what is a smaller size go fast boat. Um, I'm gonna go into the middle, so why don't you guys, actually, no, before I do that, let's have a look at the transom. So, can you all see? You, you step up one step to get onto the transom, and then the transom itself is all on the same level. So, the engine mounting, it's just in a normal well, like you would see on any boat, so not much unique about that. We've got the 350 horsepower. If you are interested in the performance, We've just filmed a test drive video with all the best droning that we could do today in this beautiful summer weather. So subscribe, give me a like if you can. If you seriously are enjoying this content, I'm loving making it, please give me a like because I, I want to get it out to as many people as possible. Um, so yeah, we've got the 350. Basically, these days, yes, it's optionable with the uh, Mercury 300 V8s and other motors. Engines are pretty hard to get these days. Uh, a lot of people are buying boats if you haven't noticed. So just take what you can get. The 350s are wonderful, they're proven, they go fast, they're a, a reliable engine. I'd be happy with that. Flag, that's pretty good to see, got to have that. Um, stainless steel cleats, one and two here. But what I can see, this flag holder, there's one on the other side as well, which tells me there's most likely an aft facing sunshade as well, which I haven't seen, but I'm going to assume there's two poles that go out the back, two poles to go out the front and you can have a mesh out the back and a mesh up the front to cover the whole boat in shade. Now underneath, one, two seats here, we have some storage. We've got drink holders here and here. And if you just look underneath this one, we have an electric draw fridge. Oh, thank you guys. Ninth, Ninth Island, Tasmania. Huh, it's very, it's very generous of you. We didn't turn the fridge on though. <laughs> um, so that's good. We got a, a draw fridge there, but it is optional to have extra fridges. It's either this one or the other one. I can't quite remember, but you've got two opposing cupboards on either side. So one underneath the skipper and then one underneath the passenger seat on the port side. And then this area is your little Barbie zone. Isn't that great? So we've got a cold water tap just here because we've got the outboard engine so we don't have a hot water cylinder. And this looks like gas to me. I'm just gonna lift that up because it is gas. Oh, that's nice and heavy. And that's flat, so that'll be good for bacon and eggs too and all the fat's just gonna run in there, so that's cool. Um, you've got the little protector here for the heat. And this is a nice little prep or serving station uh, when you're not cooking, so, so that's quite handy. Now, um, I'm not gonna open it up right now, but you can take this table out. I've already mentioned that you can drop it down to turn it into coffee table mode, but you've got access into the bilge. This is not a boat where they're hiding anything. You really can access every single corner of the vessel. So through this hatch here, we get into the bilge. Through this hatch here, we get into the batteries and more access to the bilge. And then we got more access as we go further forward in the boat. In the middle of the boat, the 300 litre fuel tank is centrally mounted, down nice and low, keep the center of gravity where you need it to be. So come a bit closer, I want you guys to see this helm um, and just get a feel for what I'm feeling here. So the hard bimini I really like. It doesn't shake around all that much. Um, I like all biminis, there's a bit of movement, but it's, it's quite solid. So it's been built well, it's a, a light, on the inside it's been wrapped on the outside this particular one but i'm sure you could customize it to however you like i like that because it gives you um, a, a feeling of light underneath but you're not going to be getting hammered by the sun 
Then when you move to the dash itself, we've got this matte colored feature here. So that's gonna stop some of the glare um, if there is any coming back your way. And then the windscreen itself, it's really good. It's a solid, sexy windscreen, I gotta say. And the wind is deflected at an angle of about like that. So when I was driving from a standing position, the wind, uh, it wasn't aggressive until about sort of four inches above my head. And it also deflects the wind about like that sort of angle from the side. So you really are protected. You can drive at speed with a hat on and not really be uh, too interfered by the breeze. Two very large, that's a German beer size cup holder. That's, that's you're not gonna muck around with cans, little cans on that one. One, two, I love seeing that. All your boat systems are here. So everything from your instruments controls, your lights, um, windscreen wipers and what have you just there. A Simrad control just here, mounted on a funny angle. Not sure why they've done that anyway. Um, and a Simrad display here, phone charging there. Um, on off for the motor there and your bow thruster on starboard so it's all quite at hand with your right hand and you can dedicate your left hand for steering the boat just there i can see a little voltmeter for the battery just there more charging and storage down at your feet on starboard and then again on port come with me we'll go downstairs and have a look at the accommoda accommodation accommodation Welcome below. Um, this is where carrying that fullness forward to the bow makes all the difference. This bow cabin is ginormous. Like, okay, I'm gonna put my feet at the end. I think you'd, you'd sleep either way, but I can't touch the end. I'm not even close. This is German size. This is massive. You can even, look at this. It's huge and it's all padded down the sides. So you could roll around and be very comfortable. Sitting up in bed is also possible. Like you could do a bit of this. Yeah, a little bit, little bit higher, it's still possible. And you've got an opening hatch here for ventilation and emergency exit. You've got lights all the way around, this nice timber finished um, headboard just here and a beautiful, thick, comfortable mattress. So this is a proper, proper boat to go away and spend more than a couple of nights, just you and a partner, no problems whatsoever, or somewhere to send the kids down uh, to get them out of the sun or just stop annoying the parents and the adults. So as we make our way through, um, I hope you guys can see this. We can always cut to some shots if you can't. We've got a fixed window on starboard with a blind, and then we have a fixed window on port, and then we have a nice little sort of convenience area on port as you come way, come down through the companionway and more than enough space like I can almost stand up you know if can you guys see me there I'm just sort of I'm standing and just angling my head there but in this section I can I can fully stand up so I'm just touching my head there at five seven that's no problem so this this really is a big cabin underneath the beds don't know Okay, access into the bilge. I do enjoy being able to see everything. More batteries, bow thruster battery, and the bow thruster unit itself. So operating, servicing, and maintaining this boat, there's no secrets. You can get to it all, which I do like because many boat builders don't let you get access to all the bits and pieces throughout. Got a little storage nook in here. Um, now, why don't you give me the camera and I'll take you into the toilet with me because if I open this door so this is the head compartment I'm just gonna track down so you can see that nice little vanities two storage lockers and a little storage area there manually operated loo um, one hatch with a blind not a hatch sorry that's just a little window but the hatch for ventilation is just up here. So that's great. And I think if I, Tom, give you this camera and I'll jump in to give you guys a feeling of the space on the loo. Look at all this headroom. You know, many of these adventure boats, uh, you're crouching down, you really are in a bit of a cave, but this one, I can almost stand up 
I've got the ventilation and I've got quite a bit of room to move and heaps of storage. Like, this isn't just for one day. This is totally doable for a couple of nights. So, if the RIG 280 looks like a bit of all right for you, um, stay tuned because I do actually have quite a bit of access to this boat over our beautiful summer ahead. Uh, so I'm gonna be making a few more videos and just testing it out and talking to you about what I learn. Uh, but what's my wrap up? Um, if you're looking for a go fast boat, if you're looking for a capable boat, if you're looking for a boat that can go offshore and widen your horizons, if you want that boating experience with less limits, I'm talking about weather limitations that change your plans or ruin your days, RIG 280 is absolutely gonna fit the bill for you. My name's Dan Jones, this is Dan's Boat Life. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. So this is an easy cruise for this boat and I'm doing that across waves.